That was the gear announcing the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess on that, like, you know, I, I forgot that the, I remember reading an article or an interview or someone with an instrument, uh, like a performer that said they liked their instruments to have that kind of personality where, you know, they, they sort of quite actively take on a mind of its own. Like, you know, obviously this just died or whatever, powered down or whatever it did, but like, uh, I mean, that <laughs> it's now power cycling, um, but, uh, <laughs> it's, it wants to be awake. Um, I mean, that relates to a kind of like ridiculous like grid origin story, which was, you know, I hand built this thing out of like sticks and wires 20 years ago. And part of the attraction to the performance for the audience members who knew that I was going to play this was probably it was going to break in the middle and I have to like open it up and like find the wire that fell out of the breadboard <laughs> and like patch back together. So it kind of becomes like the theater of mm. repair. I feel like sometimes live coding is a little bit like that yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. It's like people like are, yeah. So I think that fragility is an important part of kind of technology performance when you don't, uh, or potentially when you perceive that like if there's a computer involved, it can be well rehearsed, and so it's just like uh, you know tape playback yeah, essentially. Yeah. It's like all of the uh, I don't know internet outrage that can happen around the like the push play culture if you're elevated high enough yeah we sit low so that we're pretend that we're not hiding something <laughs> i mean i guess it's an interesting because like as like someone who makes the tools and stuff there's a there's like an intrinsic like seeing a mechanic drive or something like that i mean that's, that's not a very good metaphor but something like that where like you have a very intimate knowledge of most of those objects on the table there um those didn't power cycle with you know which is <laughs> A separate thing, but <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's it's funny because the more intimate knowledge you have of something, you actually have like a long history of witnessing also its failures. Um, and so I'm I'm really interested in the relationship that we would de that we develop with our instruments over time, and that you you learn how to either uh, kind of dance around their failures or uh, kind of like try to improve them continually so that they like don't fail you to a certain degree. So it's like some instruments that we've made in the past, uh, it's like I've never been able to kind of like refine to the point of being super comfortable with them. Or it's like you have a script that you're working on where it's where it uh, caused you embarrassment that you can't like forgive it for <laughs> at, at some point. And so you kind of like move on to a new thing, which kind of functions as a clean slate. You have a new relationship with object. Hmm. And and is comfortable something different than confidence in, in that kind of context? Or are they like hand in hand? Uh, it's a mix. I think, I think like comfortable has to do with failure and confidence is maybe a little bit like, you know, you're going to get somewhere in mm. particular, um, or, or kind of like, I think that being able to have precise replication inside of an instrument is something that people often chase, but related to what you were just saying, I think that actually takes a lot of the a character of the dialogue with the instrument away. So if you if it's a completely predictable thing where you're going to get exactly the same result every time you approach it, it's like, that's not a real, you're not having a dialogue with the instrument and it becomes kind of in your command versus um, a lot of instruments that I tend to gravitate towards. It's you have to learn their character and they become a, they become a player in your, in your band. Sort yeah. of. They have a personality and you have to respect what, their wishes are going to be <laughs> and how much of that is um because there's something different like of it behaving uh, randomly or or something like that like there's like not that there's a continuum between behaving predictably and randomness is the continuum i don't think that's the continuum but i think there's there's something there in terms of reproducibility or predictability versus um engaging with a, a system that's dynamic you know maybe to use yeah. like a, a kind of a more neutral term there um i, I guess the question here is is more like a semi-prompt is like a an instrument maker like you you have some say over that localization yeah. and what you make you know and like yeah how conscious is that in terms of i think it i think that by having a instrument that can be redefined 
your your level of interest and control can be steered by the instrument designs. So I feel like over time I have had I've had instruments where I've wanted to be like all highly reflective of gesture and other ones where you want to kind of like um, push something into motion and then just like kind of tune it a little mm -hmm. bit and kind of wait, let it unfold in, in certain ways. So I, uh, I mean, I do, I do, you know, historically kind of composers and performers have like staked their solid feeling about that continuum um, mm -hmm. and, you know, created kind of careers and sounds off of a commitment to like one position, but I think that like that this is like a great territory to just like swim back and forth around all the poles. Yeah. 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 What about you? Uh, yeah, I mean it, it's yeah having like a lot of bits and bobs is like the the instrument that I I play at large ends up being like an assemblage of components or you know th you know things that uh, at least these days it's it's a combination of subsystems mm -hmm. you know, in any given performance. Um, so it's interesting negotiating that and also the, I guess, relationship to how it behaves in context. So even like, like with this, like the early performance, I, I was expecting or anticipating a, a different kind of relationship with the amplified melodica to how it was sounding and feeling in, the, in this room, in this context, where like it wasn't what I th was envisioning when I put this subsystems together. So um, in that sense, it's an, a little analogous to, uh, to what you were saying, but in a different um, a different domain. You know, mm -hmm. like I made a decision, but that decision didn't manifest in the way that I thought it would, which is different from having a system not behave the way that you think it would. Because so, so, do you feel like they all have distinct personalities that you assign to them? Like you know who you're unearthing and pushing, like yeah. in time for you to start. Yes, and but you have to be careful with this one, <laughs> and to a certain extent. But the, the, like, there's there's always like a, a little gremlin in that there's a core feedback and shitty mic situation at the center of a lot of these setups, which is very room dependent, angle dependent, like like, like amp dependent. Like mm. there's there's an aspect of that that is um, really unknowable until performance or sound check, you know, or that kind of stuff, which is. Um, there's only so much accounting for that, but I think the the other elements, to a certain extent, yeah, like I, I know each one and where they kind of go in, and, uh, and at the same time having um, a high enough because a lot of what I do ends up having a lot of either acoustic components to it or or some non computer based component that I can always navigate above that. Mm. So if like um, like code wise or system wise, it isn't doing what, what let's let's say what I was wanting it to do, I can just kind of like eject and go manual or acoustic, you know, like independent of that, which it would be different like in, in a purely um, electronic situation where something like that becomes uh, not harder to navigate, but different to navigate, you know? Right. You have to kind of like have those systems also ready in parallel. Yeah, yeah, basically. exactly. Yeah. So, so how often, um, I mean, you are, you're in a kind of like highly customized setup right here. Mm -hmm. I'm in a highly customized one half situation i'm yeah. i'm curious about like how like when when you uh decide that you can kind of um purchase your way into a situation like when you need a, an instrument or something to fulfill a role like when when do you feel comfortable just kind of like f having acquiring something that either someone else has designed or like a product that's off the shelf that kind of perfectly fits your need yeah and, and how does that relate to uh then how you feel about that it, it's like you didn't birth the thing. But yeah, you kind yeah. of brought it along. I mean, it, it's interesting because it's it's a mix here. So like, there's a combination of like shitty, inappropriate DJ hardware that just suits the the function that I need. Mm -hmm. You know, so that you know, it just it kind of coincidentally sets. And then I mean, this stuff doesn't have massively DIY stuff. So there's a couple of DIY controllers, but uh, there's more DIY to be had. But um, I mean, these days it's a lot of of building building the one-off tool that I need to do the thing that I couldn't do before. Right, so uh, you're, you're, you're making, you're adapting the systems instead of kind of adapting yourself to an existing system. Cause, yeah. Because like certainly you could make do without the DIY stuff, but you just, it would be a little freakier 
or yeah, you have to adjust your body accordingly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to a certain extent, like, I, I guess like most MIDI faders don't um, move quickly. They're not tuned for like DJ type stuff. So like, uh, the, but that could be like you could oil them up, you know, and clean them and, and kind of get that going a little bit more. So that that ends up, I do need kind of like something fast there. But yeah, this could be any other kind of controller. And some of the other bits of the components could be more generic. Um, there's just, a, um, I guess, a, an intentional specificity that that manifests when when you make the thing that you want it to be. You know, like mm -hmm. is, is a, even if in my case it's a lot of one-off or two-off things mm -hmm. that, that I'll make. Um, and even even if it ends up being like this is like it's a MIDI fader, like that's not a novel idea or anything like that. But like it's it's built in a way that suits what I needed and with the resolution that I needed and all that kind of stuff. So going through the process of, of making, designing and coding that um, kind of gets you a little bit inside it in a way that I think is for one enjoyable, like in just a process oriented mm -hmm. way, but I think um, can manifest in um, a, fami a familiarity and performance. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. It's like by seeing your, I've seen you perform a lot and it feels like these aspects, um, they've become such a part of the drum that they're almost invisible to you. And yeah, I yeah. feel like that's a good metric with a lot of instruments is, yes, they are a collaboration, they exist with you, but also sort of they're, when they become a part of your body. It, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I get concerned frequently with things that are like very uh, flashy light oriented mm -hmm. because it, it, it kind of makes the, the performance highly visual in a in an in a way that kind of detracts potentially from the uh from what you're really hearing or kind of draws you toward draws people towards trying to kind of decode what is happening like you know like this is just like ooh like like when i when i turn these on and it's jumping all over the place mm. it's like the impulse to try to like know what it's doing yeah, is yeah. uh in incontrovertible yeah so. i mean that that ends up like opening kind of a big kind of worms but the like Myself as a performer, I put very little weight into legibility of that, like like um, of interface and um, instrument design. But again, because there's often a, an acoustic thing and or a gestural language that surrounds it, I feel like uh, performance is communicated mm -hmm. regardless. You know, so like like it's different. Like where you have a, a flat interface there, and there's. Like, I mean, there is gesture that you're communicating just from like the, the manifestation of having to move your body, but it's, um, it's, it's more localized mm -hmm. and there's more emphasis put on, uh, what's happening with LEDs and patterns moving. Whereas here, like I grab a thing and move a thing, like, uh, like we know your, your yeah. brain, we know what, the, we, we know what might, <laughs> might happen. Yeah. Or, yeah. Like there's, there's yeah. An, a, a causality, you know, like when I pick up a thing, a sound might come from that thing, like in, in a way that that um, we exist as humans and have seen objects do things in the past. But for example, like earlier when you were playing the mic in the previous session, oh, yeah. when you were playing the mic on your shorts and there was crazy piano noises coming out of it. <laughs> um, yeah, so you said you just disregard the... Yeah, I mean, there I'm aware that there is... the. I guess in doing something like that, I'm aware that there is going to be a, a discontinuity in legibility. Mm -hmm. like, like there's a sound happening of, of unknown origin. Mm. Um, so I'm aware of that, but for that one, it was more, um, being aware that I didn't want to produce sounds the way that that system is set up is it, it's audio analysis. So I needed to make sounds for sounds to happen, but I didn't want to make audible sounds in order for those sounds to happen. So it was more doing that. But I was thinking specifically, like, I mean, even in this setup, like my, my fader stuff is it's the most obfuscated that it could possibly be. Like, 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 well, right now, yeah, it's definitely like, like it's, it's, all, it's like kind of under the melodica, you know, and, and I've had yeah. other controller stuff where like, yeah, they're like literally, mm. um, out of frame or just not in it. And it, it's something that, you know, for some people, the, the legibility of particularly performance with electronic instruments is of paramount. Like, like you want to make, oh yeah. Well, like the sensor suit where it's like, you're all rigged yeah, yeah. and it's like, then the point is like to definitely like show correlation. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the I guess unfortunate part of that is that like a lot of the, a, a lot of things that could be um, read to be correlated immediately in a performance tend to be pretty low level and banal like like a, a theremin or something like that like you walk if you've never seen a theremin it won't take you long to figure out like 
you move closer and like uh, but then like that's that's kind of it like there's not there's not much more depth there right so it's so the the technology no longer kind of validates the sound that is coming yeah, out yeah. so so where are we are we i'm i'm curious if there's uh where you think we are now as a result with performing with with technology as no longer being kind of self-validating yeah i, I mean i lean on the like i don't give a shit side of it and just the, 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 like i don't concern myself explicitly with legibility in that way uh, and then just rely on the work and the gesture to to communicate the meaning um but i think it's I, it's a i guess a luxurious position in that because there's acoustic sources and or physically um, gestural things happening that that's the case like when I play like purely gamepad then it becomes a bit more complicated because that's super obfuscated and just kind of like I tend to close my eyes and look at, like it's it's like the opposite of performance um, and the gestures become mi like minuscule and like like illegible you know and, mm. and um, I think that's fine but yeah in, in a situation like that I can see more concern being put on something like that but like I don't know it's I lean towards that like so does that make you kind of more uh, kind of readily acceptable of just tape music where the where the performers actually I mean, we, we're kind of yeah. like going full circle now yeah, about I mean, like not that, pretending to or playing play but at the same time the gesture doesn't matter so. no I I, I I mean we're we're getting into more like hot take territory but like I think, <laughs> I think that's just not performance music like just listen listen at home in like a, a controlled environment mm -hmm. like like mm -hmm. the the fact that like tape music as a concert music, I think is a more of an, a cultural artifact of, of when music needed to happen live in front of people in order to ha be happen. Like you needed an orchestra to produce music. So it happened in a concert, like tape music, you don't really need that artifice of performance, but we still do it because that's how people listen to music. You go to a concert and you listen. Like, so I, I'm of the opinion that like, just do that shit at home. Like don't, I don't, I don't need to see you hit play on the stage and walk off. Or or well, not, or, but 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 then there's I mean like the, the like community. I hear you one hundred percent. On the other side of it, I think like group listening is like such a lost. Uh, yeah, but even, even uh, that that, that could be a different content. So like, if you're at home with friends and you're like in, you know in the listening environment and you're listening collectively to music, that's that's great and I'm, I'm into that. But it's the go to a place, sit down, be quiet. Not that you should be talking like when you listen to me, but like the, the ritual of concert is, um, I think, well, inappropriate, full stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, but specifically for that kind of music, like even this, like like this, I mean, we're, we're I mean, we have a, a couple people here, but this is not a concert, but like even still like with, with niche or, or, or like, um, not mainstream cultural practices. I, I don't think it needs to, to involve mainstream cultural um, vehicles for realization. And thankfully, like often there's not money involved anyway, so it's not like, you know, those, those things don't um, sort themselves out largely, like, you know, the, like empty audience or whatever, you know. Um, so it, it tends to be a self-fixing problem. But I, 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 think, I, I think the manner in which the, the art is engaged with uh, reflects the 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 aesthetic and intentionality and philosophical approach that with the art is created, mm. um, and I think yeah I think that matters. So I think this intimacy and mm. even like the filmed intimacy, I, I think there's like it's it's inseparable for me from the what I think is important with this kind of practice. Yeah, you know, when I think. Uh... Maybe, maybe what I was circling around and didn't quite acknowledge yeah. was in my brain was uh, I really love the space as like an aspect of the of the performance and like almost regarding like whatever resonant body you were inside of. Yeah, it's yeah. like absolutely one of the one of the performers. Um, we've been really enjoying kind of playing music in our in our barn for like the quality that it has in there, and so there's like something really disappointing about particularly just. Uh, hearing hearing tape music maybe like not in the context that it was meant to be heard like playing out of your macbook speakers like on your <laughs> on your dinner table while you're having yeah. eat mac and cheese yeah um so yeah well that was a wild noodle uh, yeah of a i mean to, to kind of ask a, like a little follow-up question with there like with a, a like um almost a, a philosophical question so 
you know, enjoying, you know, the sound of, uh, you know, this, of like your barn, you're playing in there and it has a certain sound. I mean, you've hosted concerts there and all that, like intrinsically, like having bodies in the space changes the nature of the sound in the space, like in a very practical way, like the reverb gets yeah. absorbed, like the bodies, the mass of bodies mm -hmm. physically dampens the sound. Like the, like, does that, does that mean that having a concert in the barn is no longer that space they're interfering yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um i did do i did do some like reamp barn uh playback of some some of ezra's pieces and then re-recorded back onto a cassette with an empty mm. barn so yeah I, you can do both <laughs> no yeah. no but no audience or uh obstructive audience i mean of course i mean yes physically acoustically mm. there's uh something happening but you know the psychic energy yeah. um you know changes your changes your disposition it's just Absolutely, like knowing yeah. knowing that uh you are being heard and perceived is that different from so i mean yeah we're, we're a couple tangents deep here but the so like i know for myself performing in front of people like performance you know like when you engage with the performance like there's like a mode that kicks on um do you find like because you you do a bunch of videos as well like where it might just be you filming you know your, yourself or stuff like do you feel the ritual of performance even if it's just you on your own i don't know if anybody's there when you're doing these some of these videos but like do you feel the temporal like do you are you performing i yeah i think i'm terrified of seeing myself on video in the future <laughs> um and definitely we had it was a a hilarious struggle to like shoot videos in the past and luckily we haven't like made any new stuff recently so i don't really have to like you know for a product product kind of endorsement there's yeah, not yeah. a lot of that but yeah I, I feel like uh kelly and trent and i did like some like you know 50 take kind of all right performances in the past and we're all like friends still it's yeah, cool. yeah. <laughs> but um no i mean like even this now like this is uh uh, I feel like if I knew this wasn't being recorded, like my cadence is definitely modulated. Like I'm probably <laughs> using some different words than I normally use. Mm. Um, yeah, it's like, is, is something different when it's being, you know, observed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, potentially broadcast for mm. an unknowably large number of people. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, without it, it was more the question like like I I I think it was just a byproduct of of doing so many collaborations with Ange in terms of filming where I I began feeling performance like as a performer you know like you feel a certain way when you like um, come on in video even if it's just two mm -hmm. people in the room or sometimes just myself in a room yeah and it, I associated it to like the temporal and physical disconnect knowing that my either myself or someone else would watch this at some point later in a different space so like the performance still happened like the tree still fell in the woods or whatever but like it's it's no long it's not localized in space and time and that that aspect of it i think still feels real you know like it mm -hmm. feels like performance even if it's mm -hmm. if it's just me if it's just me and you or whatever yeah, yeah. like in the the kind of the resonance of that as like mediated through video and ethernet cables and wi-fi dongles and bluetooth speakers and yeah and i've I, I feel like I've tried to um, be kind to myself to just see these sorts of moments as like documentation that you get to perceive, like be perplexed by your past self, basically. Right. Just like, oh yeah, <laughs> I thought that sort of back then, maybe, yeah. and now <laughs> now we can move on yeah. and make different sounds. Hmm. Shall we move on and make some different sounds? <laughs> yeah, let's see if our robot turns on. Yeah. Mine does that sometimes as well. It's thinking about it. It's looking enthusiastically at us right now.
If you'd like to support the making of these videos, please join our Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.